expand these topics, they are more likely to embrace the behavioral change that pandemics necessitate. School infrastructure needs to support hygiene and the uninterrupted supply of water. The Department of Basic Education will spend much time reflecting and evaluate its performance based on the outputs of the 2020 NSC examinations. In addition to being better prepared for natural crises like COVID-19, we'll evaluate the analysis of the learner outcomes in terms of the various dimensions that have presented. Speaking of connection, uh, we have noticed that uh, I used the Shitsonga saying at the beginning of my speech. In 2021, the DBE is committed to improving the offering and boosting the esteem of African languages. We have come a long way to offer standardized examination in all 12 South African languages. Yes, you heard me correctly, 12 languages. Since 2018, South African Sign Language is an official language offered in the NSC examination. However, more must be done to reaffirm the offering of at least one African language by all learners in all African schools. My sincere appreciation to the government of the Republic of South Africa, the Portfolio Committee and the Select Committee on Education, parents, learners, educators, and all stakeholders that have assisted the department in braving the storm and making the 2020 academic year a reality. There are many individuals who might have criticized because of lack of knowledge at the time, because we all did not understand the pandemic, but we want to thank our minister, Umam Tsekha, and the MECs in all nine provinces for soldiering on with the support of all stakeholders to make sure that uh, this academic year, of course, not in the expense of the lives of learners, become a success. Let me conclude, Program Director. I didn't greet you when I started. Uh, by welcoming you, Program Director, and all that are gathered here and all at home, you are all welcome to the um, announcement of the results of class of 2020. Let us pay attention to everything that will be said. Let us make this afternoon a memorable one. I thank you. Thank you very much. That was the Deputy Minister of Basic Education, Dr. Regina Mahawle. Thank you very much for that, Deputy Minister. What a year. And I'd like to repeat and say what a challenging year, particularly for education. And I think given those very challenges, Deputy Minister, I must say, I must commend you and your team. You guys have done quite a great job. And congratulations, by the way, for that. Um, I am soon going to be asking the Minister of Education, Minister Njimutseka, to come. But before I ask her to come, please, could we watch this? Mindset. 
Because if you have a positive mindset, then you'll be motivated to do a lot of things and it will get you through there. Wow. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're going to be playing another um, video for all of you to, to watch just before the minister comes to join us. We're having, again, some technical difficulties in this regard. I know we're all gearing up to be listening to the Minister Me Njimutecha to come and announce the 2020 results for the matric loss of that year. If you could please just help me welcome Me Njimutecha. Me. Program Director, MEC Sufi, who is here, my colleague, the Deputy Minister, Dr. Mhaule, the different MECs that are connected from the different provinces, our senior officials, DG, and heads of department in different provinces, our partners in the sector, our teacher unions or organized labor, our parents, our learners, the most important people this day, and members of the media. <coughs> Indeed, Program Director, we are gathered here to announce a 2020 National Senior Certificate examination results. We are announcing these results in the context of what the NDP enjoins us to do, which is what we always repeat, and I quote, that by 2030, South Africans should have access to education and training of the highest quality, leading to significantly improve learner, learners' outcomes. It says the performance of South African learners in international <coughs> standard tests should be comparable to the performance of learners from countries at a, at a similar level of development and with similar le <coughs> levels of access. A close quote. It is without doubt that the 2020 academic year will be remembered as the year that not only presented major health challenges, but a year that, <coughs> that the entire world was gulped by novel COVID-19 pandemic and government with its partner departments and its strategic partners worked very hard to strike a balance between saving lives and saving the year of 2020. You heard one of the learners says he was worried about having to repeat metric. Fellow South Africans, the Council of Education Ministers has approved sector priorities that lay the foundation for quality education as well as contribute in providing permanent solutions to the architecture of the education and training system of our country once and for all. And these <coughs> priorities inter alia in include improving funda foundational skills in numeracy and literacy, which should be underpinned by a reading revolution, and ramping up early childhood development, which includes the urgent implementation of a two-year ECD before grade one, and therefore we have to migrate the zero to four-year-olds from the Department of Social Development to basic education and develop a framework for ECD. The other priority for this term is immediate implementation of a curriculum with skills and competencies for a changing world in all public schools, particularly 
<coughs> ensure that the three stream cu curriculum model works well, that our children are, are prepared for the fourth and the fifth industrial revolution. <coughs> They're given entrepreneurial skills and the schools of specializations are, are, are strengthened. Our curriculum is decolonized amongst many other things that we have to do during this term. But we also have to continue to decisively deal with quality and efficiency through the implementation of standardized assessments, amongst others, at various exit points of the systems, grade three, six, and nine, to remind you, and offer a general education certificate. Last time when I announced that we are going to have a general education certificate, the public was quite surprised, perhaps because we had not been repeating what is in our legislation that we will be offering this general education certificate, not as an exit to go home, but as a way where learners are directed to different pathways and introduce multiple qualifications and certifications. We also have to work hard towards an integrated infrastructure development plan. We also have to work with assisted departments in sports, recreation, arts and culture to promote social cohesion, health and school safety and finally, in line with our commitment towards an inclusive education and ensure that no child is left behind because the sector needs to work to continue its work to improve and strengthen education and provision for learners with special education needs. I shouldn't be surprised, I have two different ones. I have one A and one B because I've been changing. <laughs> so program director, during the announcement of the results of 2019, we did inform the nation that of these seven priorities. We can report at least on one of them today because it's about assessments, not on all the other priorities. That we have indeed participated in international benchmark assessment studies, one of them which is PILS, it is Progress in International Literacy for Grade 4. We also participated in TIMS and we received the results last year and it is trends in international mathematics and science, but also participated in SACMEC, which is Southern and Eastern African Consortium for Monetary Quality Education, which <coughs> works on benchmarking grade six. And we can say in all these international benchmark assessment studies, we have been proving or providing evidence that our basic education system is definitely on the rise. It is a system on the rise. So we are proud to announce, for instance, that last year, with the 2020 team, because we received the 2020 team's results last year, in the South Africa, we participated in these benchmark studies, and again pointed towards an upward tra trajectory in the past 11 years. So the latest team's results of 2019, explained in the context of many forms of inequalities and education system that continues to improve on its achievements and continues to bridge gaps on disciplinary knowledge and educational outcomes. The team's 2019 results again confirm a steady increase in the percentage of grade five learners, because that's what it assesses. And just between 2000, 2003 and 2019, as a country, we've increased our points from 104 points in maths and 102 points in, in science. So I want to hear about what we are here for. National Senior Certificate, so I'm getting there. <coughs> so last year, program director, during my budget vote on basic education, we did remind the nation that we're increasingly prioritized interventions, improvements, in improvement programs, and policies that target to improve quality of learning and teaching, and implementing accountability systems to ensure that the quality outcomes are achieved right through the basic education system. And our interventions at, <coughs> for both learners were targeting learners at risk which are underperforming, targeting learners who are moderate, and also targeting high achievers. And this differentiated approach was meant to address both content deficiencies that may prevent learners from achieving good educational outcomes and support moderate to high achievers to improve their performance thereby improving quality of learning throughout. This we had to do despite the devastation brought on all of us by COVID-19. We had repeatedly informed the nation that our interventions were not only confined to saving the 20 academic year, 
which was an understandable concern from different communities. But we also worked very hard as a sector to ensure that we contribute towards the saving of lives. The staggered reopening of schools from around June, it lost almost a term, and the differentiated timetable, the trim curriculum, the regular provisioning of school, <coughs> and the trim curriculum, the regular provision of school feeding, provision of psychosocial services, and all of these were to ensure that we can deal with the risks which were, allowed, which were outlined by the World Health Organization. But World Health Organization says this about school closures, and I quote, it says, during COVID-19 pandemic, prolonged school closures may result in a reversal of educational gains, limiting children's educational and vocational opportunities, as well as their social and emotional interactions and development. The longer learners stay out of school, the higher the risk of dropping out. And accordingly, learners who are out of school, and particularly girls, not only them, are at risk of vulnerabilities, including teenage pregnancy, but not only limited to that. But it also says further prolonged school closures interrupt and disrupt in, and disrupt the provisional and access of essential school-based services such as school feeding, nutrition programs, immunization, mental and physical health. Our own Dr. Gustafsson, who wrote then a blog to the UNESCO Institute for Statistics, had this to say. Disruptions in schools that we saw last year had denied learners their usual classroom experiences with teachers and other learners. They were serious for younger learners who were most in need of contact disruptions. So I can say, I think we are all uh, witnesses to it. For 2020, so I have to explain the context so they understand that we didn't do it by major. Again, we had to work very hard. There was targeted support aimed, aimed at ensuring that all learners receive maximum opportunities to succeed, that learners programs, learner programs had to encompass broad collection of educational strategies including supplementary materials, textbooks, guides. And this class, for instance, never had vacations after we opened. They were in school in June, they were in school in September, and they had to sacrifice weekends, they had long hours in schools. But more gratifying is that our teachers themselves assisted a lot in making sure that they sacrificed their own time and their work, even beyond the call of duty. But there were also volunteers that were mobilized to support learners during this period, we had professionals from different universities who came with all di different strategies. There were ICT interventions, including the provision of, de of device devices, data, online content, visual, vi virtual classes, broadcasts, and radio lessons. And also schools provided specific learner support programs to address specific performance results or trends. The different NGOs in the country, corporates, and all different corporates, and we really want to thank Corporate South Africa, institutions, different institutions of higher learning, the different committee groups, and volunteers came to the party to support us. For instance, the National Education Collaboration Trust, through its WOSA metrics, campaigned and worked very close with their partners to make sure that indeed we support the class of 2020. And for that, we remain eternally grateful. We also want to commend all our learners, our teachers, our senior management teams, our support staff, parents, and our officials for the resilience they have shown in, in braving the novel COVID-19 pandemic so that we're not scared ourselves. But we felt we have to live side by side with the corona for the sake of our children and their future. They had to work hard to make sure that the class of 2020 received optimum support, which was indispensable to their program. And before I just give you the real results, let me tell you, because one of my biggest fears was Umar Lucy. So I have to quote what Umar Lucy says. Uh, after the leak of the meds and science papers, that's so why I said, let them rewrite. I don't want to edit. So I don't want to go and fight with Umar Lucy. Uh, so it says, and I quote, Having noted with concern the serious irregularities regarding the leakage 
of mathematics paper two and physical science paper two, Umalusi says, uh, it's a pit I'm reading, you won't see my emphasis. It says in bold, it is satisfied that there were no systemic irregularities that were reported, which might have compromised the overall credibility and, credit and inter integrity of the November 2020 examinations which were at administered by DBE. Therefore, it's not myself saying, Malusi approves the results of the DBE results of the November 2020 NSC exam. So this is what we're giving legally and it has been approved by the highest decision-making body in terms of the credibility and integrity of exams. So I really want to advise all of you to go and read fully so we don't have enough time to really go through what uh, Umalus would have said. This class, it's the second cohort that wrote 12 subjects offering the South African Sign Language as a home language, which was written by 100 candidates. It's the cohort that wrote civil technologies, me mechanical technologies, and electrical technologies. It's the second cohort, it's the second year that we're presenting that. And each of these uh, areas have technical mathematics, which I'm told is sometimes more difficult than your usual maths, and technical science, which was written by about 40,856 candidates. But it was also a cohort which was impacted by different policies, like the policy of progression. Normally, with the policy of progression, the previous years, we used to encourage learners to only write subjects that they were ready with and assist them to write the remaining subjects. But this year, they all had to write all six subjects in one sitting. So there was no uh, mul <coughs> multi multiple presentation. So there were no multiple opportunities for exams. We also, for the first time, broke the paper of accounting and business accounting to paper one and paper two. And it was the first time that we do that. But also to our pleasure, in 2018, DBE and universities agreed on the aboli to abolish your designated list of subjects, which means every subject will qualify learners for universities, which was not the case in the past, and it was a problem. So this year, we had a total number for 2020, number that was registered, which is 725,034, and of those 607, 226 were the full-time candidates, which we will report at length with and then the others won't be reporting on today. And the 117,800 were part-time candidates. Again, the results will be contained in the full text. I won't be able to go through them. So in addition to the full-time and part-time candidates who enrolled for the 2020 NEC exams, we had to combine the June and the December uh, <coughs> exams, which then led us to a total of more than a million learners or candidates at one single sitting, which was a new phenomenon for us, which presented major logistics for us. So for these exams, there were 147 question papers that were set. We printed 8 million question papers and produced or had to mark 706 million scripts. And they were delivered in the different centers, as you could have, the, the teacher said, we had to break up because of social distancing. We needed more centers, more invigilators. We had almost 65,000 invigilators where to invigilate our exams. Um, and we had to appoint 45,272 markers. And we had to go and work in 179 uh, marking centers. And I'm told that the DG visited all 179 uh, marking centers to check if things were going well. So thank you very much, DG. So from the outset, I really want to advise that people should go again go, <coughs> go and get the comprehensive statement from our website, which will give you all the details and profiles of our learners. So, after going around, so you want the real story. So in the 2020 National Senior Exam, we saw, as I say, 20,000, 70,560 
learners which were progressed. So these are the learners that would have deemed weak when they're in grade 11, but felt that let's give them extra help. So which means we took this decision in 2018. And I'm sure if MECs knew that uh, COVID was on their way, they would have said, no, we will not have time to give special support to learners who are not strong enough. But by the time the corona arrived, they were already in grade 12. They couldn't send them back to say, no, you need extra help. We don't have time and opportunity to do that. So 70,000 70, of them went through. 65,000, 65, more than 65,000 sat through the exam. And we can say of these students who needed extra support, which we couldn't offer in 2020, more than 24,000 of them passed. And good news, which is saying there's something also about and the them soon about our assessment systems because almost more than 3,000 of them got bachelors without the extra support. 10,000 of those learners that were progressed, more than 10,000 got diplomas. And more than 11,000 obtained the higher certificate. And I can say 1,655 distinctions came from that group. So we are very encouraged, despite the fact that because of the challenges we had in 2020, we're not able to support them fully. Again, we also strongly believe that an inclusive education system makes an immense contribution towards an inclusive economy, to serve an inclusive society. We have, in the past few years, included tracking methods to track our progress in the performance of learners with special needs. So program director, I can say from the 2020 group, more than 2,161 learners with special needs set for the exam, and amongst those, 2,058 passed. And 943 of those 2,000 got bachelors. 582, so which means there were more bachelors from learners with special needs uh, comparatively. 582 got higher di uh, diplomas, 28 got, um, got the, the diploma, get, got the national certificate, and 563 distinctions. We got 563 distinctions from these learners. But also what we do, we track also because we want a whole basket of services to track how the provinces or how the sector is supporting children who come from poor uh, backgrounds. So we track the performance of non-fee paying schools. And we can say of the 600 and something that, go, uh, that wrote 607, 275, 615 learners from no fee schools got bachelors. 115 of them got diplomas, which in a way for us this year, and DG tells me that we had more bachelors this year than we had in the previous years. So it means I think when the going gets tough and people get tough themselves, so this class has really made us poor, uh, made us proud. Did I say poor? Proud. So it means we're getting, we're beginning to get, to, to get more learners coming from poor communities, making it also in terms of high quality passes. So while the imperatives relate to equity and redress are systematically addressed, we must admit as a sector that there are in stubborn inequalities that remain in the system. And government must continue to be applauded for its pro-poor policies, but it must continue to work hard to continue to close the gap between schools that serve the poor and schools that serve affluent communities. And that's what we're working on. But I'm also proud, as I said, the Minister of Social Development will, will pronounce more on learners that receive social grants. Again, in our full report, we have categorized that learners were on the social grant, how many of them got this and how many got what. But the other section that are really it's in the different paper because the speech right had not included said that I, that to me this, this is important, <laughs> about restor restorative justice on beneficiaries. 
Because it's very important also, as I say, to give our young learners uh, the second chance. So for instance, the full term, uh, do we call them prisoners? What's the other prison? They're in prison. <laughs> or inmates. Oh, that's the correct one. <laughs> so of the 133 inmates that wrote, uh, that entered only 124 wrote, I'm sure that's were released or other things, 71 of them got bachelors. So there might be judges of the future. <laughs> From being an inmate to a judge, I think it's getting there. And 23 of them got diplomas, and 13 got high certificate, and none of them uh, passed at the National Senior Certificate level, which is the Madrid School. So the achievement of our inmates, I shouldn't say prisoners, inmates, 86.3% of them passed. But we also measure in terms of gender. I was counting as myself how many girls are here. I said, oh, two or two, four here. But, <laughs> but there were 72,000 more girls that were enrolled for exams. And, 60, and 66,000 more came for exams. But gay, I always say in terms of explaining, let me not get into this gender thing, other, otherwise I'll find myself being taken back to school when I just speak about it in passing. I have to explain all the way this, otherwise, <laughs> So the results are, which is normally not the trend, 76.7% of the boys that road passed against 75.8% of the girls that passed. But we can say more girls than boys achieved bachelor passes, and more girls than boys got the diploma passes, even in gateway subjects. Now, so program director, ladies and gentlemen, for the past 10 years, we have noted, as I say, that we are a system that is cons consistently improving. In 2009, we had 6%. And then after 2009, we broke that rank and went into the 70. And the results for this year, the main thing I get, the overall past, including those progress, Lena said we're not able to support, stands at 76.2%, which is a drop, <coughs> which is a drop of 5.1%. And Chair, as much as we had a drop, I'm really grateful to all South Africans for having helped us because in essence, I was expecting a bloodbath. And I am very grateful and appreciative of our teachers and learners that indeed they held their own in very difficult conditions. We tried everything in our powers to claw back on lost time, which we couldn't. And if we have to look at that excluding, and I'm not wanting to make them an excuse that if there are drops, we say it's progress learners. If we remove them, that they will be at 81.2 percent. If we had removed the learners, we are unable to support. But I'm very happy that indeed, in the midst of all the difficulties, we are able to stay at 76.2 percent. And as I said, with more quality passes this year. In terms of bachelors, this year we are at 36.4 compared to 36.9 in 2019. So the difference is 0.4% in terms of the bachelor passes. 0.5 or 0.5 years. But I'm told, which I am not using here, that there are more learners, if you look at numbers, who got bachelors, but I normally don't combine percentage and numbers. And it. So what helps you is, of the hundreds that has, had written, how many passed? And again, in terms of diplomas, we got 26% of our learners getting diplomas. We had 13.7 number of our learners getting your higher certificate. And this other one also, which I don't want to get the certificate, of the ones who get national senior certificate, Baba, my daughter's score, it's 0.01%. So only 61 of them will be, have been passed. 
at your national senior certificate, 0.01%. So we want to say 177, 1,777, 435 distinctions we had this year, which is an increase of 13.1% from the distinctions that we had achieved in 2019. So there's an increase in terms of distinctions. And we must commend the following provinces that they contributed immensely towards the distinctions. KZN, Gauteng, Western Cape, Eastern Cape, and Limbobo. That Limbobo gives us very good uh, results at individual level. So let me provide performance in terms of provincial and district levels. I think that's what Buddhist Sufi and other people do. Reza Magai. The 2020 NEC exams show that three provinces, if we remove uh, the other learners we could not support, they did achieve about 70%. But that's not the issue, one those with progress learners. The Free State, again, that is, has taken their number one spot, Little Rwanda Pen next year. They got 85.1% which is a decline of 3.2% from 2019. Gauteng got 83.8% with a decline of 3.5% from 2019. The Western Cape got 79.9% with a decline of 2.4%. The KZN was imp highly impressed with KZN. It's a big province. It has the most learners in the country and a very difficult terrain. They went to position number four. So KZN got 77.6%, but also it declined with seven, with 3.7. Northwest, which is permanently in the top four, has now declined with 10.6%. And they only achieved, they, or they achieved 76.2. Mpumalanga achieved 73.7% which is a decline of 6.6%. Limbopo achieved 68.2, a decline of 5%. Eastern Cape achieved 68.1, a decline of 8.3%. And Northern Cape is closing <laughs> at the bottom at 66%, with a whopping 10.5%, which is very sad. And I'll just mention the free state was around wanted to create an impression that we complain about progress learners. But when we're studying the results, we saw that if the free state had removed the learners that we had said must be taken to grade 12 and be provided with support and take them out, they would have stood at 91.6%. And most of the provinces would have been above 80. But it is also noteworthy when we analyze, because we also want to analyze other factors around provinces that have a good performance in terms of supporting non-fee schools. Again, the free state, no, it's Gauteng, it's free state that is ranked top. And also in terms of their private schools are still ranked top. So they become number one in no non-fee paying schools and also became number one. Mpumalang, which was also a surprise to us, is ranked second in terms of their support for no-fee schools. And then, so because we're already looking at the inclusive basket, and again, our full report says which province supports more your poor and, and, <coughs> and non-fee paying schools. Let me report then on district level performance, because this is a very important level. Hey, how would you hear that in that age? <laughs> <laughs> because the NDP recognizes districts as a crucial interface of the basic education sector in identifying best practice, sharing information, and providing support to schools. And the continued growth in the performance of districts is closely monitored by ourselves and provinces from the monitoring and oversight of the performance of all schools the fee paying, the no fee paying schools, the subsidized special schools, um, and not only special schools, also your spe schools of specialization also are monitored at this level. 
And I must announce the top 10. And maybe Hilda knows why she was, now she, why I invited her as my special guest. So in the South, again, it's the top province national <laughs> district. Two years in succession and three times in five years. And it's good she's late for herself because she's leaving the sector in March and for that I really want you to join me to thank Mekekani for great service to our children in the country. Rale Boshe Mekekani. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the second district is Houghton West, the big city. Or always. <laughs> The third district is Gauteng North. The fourth top district is Johannesburg North in Gauteng. And the fifth top district is Sidibeng East in Gauteng. Then the seventh district, it's the sixth year, it's first letter in the free state. The seventh is Tabo Mfutsanyan in the, in the free state, so it's two of them. And then the eighth, it's a tie between uh, Metro North and West, in the Western Cape and Eguruleni South at 85.4. And the tenth is the Mutel in the free state. So in Tatel Suf, you can pride yourself that six out of ten, it's your districts. And thank you very much also for the great performance. But we also analyze in terms of provinces to say in the provinces which are the top districts, because that also helps us to have a sense that it's the top 10. I also had the bottom 10, and uh, Matthew says, no, let's, let's not name, let's not do shaming today. <laughs> which had helped at some stage, and I'm really sad that, that they, uh, Digo passed away because it was in the shaming that I came to know him uh, when the Butterworth district was at the bottom. And I said when I was announcing results to say, uh, this it district, I said, and he phoned me the next day to say, please, let's come and talk and see how we can help my district. And from that year, we had a very productive uh, interaction with him. He used to come here and mobilize backers and say, let's make sure that we educate our children. And he really, for all the years, and may his soul rest in peace. But uh, the team in the office says, let's not get into name shaming. So in terms of the top districts in the different provinces, in the Eastern Cape, the leading district is Nelson Mandela. It's 75.5. And I really want to say to Tatu Gonzolola Siabulela Tatu for really holding that province, especially that district high at all times. In the Free State, your competitor, Dr. Chute. And I'm sure he's relieved that we're leaving this year, so he can, <laughs> he can claim his spot of number one district, but he's the leading district in the free state. In Gauteng, I've already mentioned that it's Swanee South, Ayamekekani, it's ranked nationally, and it's also set the second year in succession and three times in five years. And indeed, Mekekani, we want to take this opportunity to thank you and your team in the district for a sterling job and want to say fairly well in a deserved break and all of the best. We have been a loyal and a good servant of the people of South Africa and her children. Thank you very much. In KZN, Ugu is a leading district in KZN, led by Umalume. My mother is a Sibiya, so Umalume. Sibiya, my daughter. Obiya, my daughter. Obiya, my daughter. And I'll be coming back. I visited his district and so funny. 
In Waterberg, the leading district is Waterberg 2, and in Bobo, it's Waterberg 2. And you know, did you, when I visited Waterberg last year, Mama Della kept on saying to Minister Gialwana, they say, those were number one, Baratava Sarat. And here she's made it, she's a leading district in Limbobo. In Bushabela, the two leading districts, and which are tying, it's Umagoba and Tate Maja. And I want to say, when the Nabake to Subongaga, whoo! In Bujana, like in Baledi, again, we want to thank you and congratulate you. In Namakwa, in the Northern Cape, it's Minir Klute, and we say Baya Danki. And in the Western Cape, the leading district is Metro North, which is leading at 85.3. And again, we want to congratulate that, that, that district. So I could see the program director. I got a program director. So give me more conclusion. <laughs> so indeed, to our district directors that we always meet with every term, I'm really looking forward to our meetings to share experiences and best practice. We also wish to thank all the district directors for their hard work, because indeed, they are the last mile towards the centerpiece of our sector, which is schools where the learners and teachers are. And we are eternally grateful for their hard work, because basically the results that we're announcing here, is the results of district managers, the teachers, and the parents. So program director, gentlemen, in conclusion, there's no doubt that we really have that the system has begun to reach the desired stability. You don't say the desired goal, stability. We needed to get the stability for us to get the right, the right tra traction, which is healthy for a large system as large and as important as ours. It is a pity that we missed the 80% last ceiling we achieved last year, but we also appreciate greatly the resilience of our schools because we think the class of 2020 held its own under very difficult conditions that we were not very familiar with. As I said earlier, we've achieved high quality passes this year, especially the number of bachelors and diplomas. The overall pass mark has improved. The passes of distinctions is much higher this year, which is a hallmark of a performance of this class of 2020. That in terms of quality, we got more quality from this class ever in the system. We think we're of strong views that had it not been of this virus, this class could have given us the best performance in the system. We are indeed proud of the class of 2020, so I want to say to these young people who represent others, we are indeed very proud of your class, which persevered against very monumental, against such monumental challenges that our system was never exposed to in the past. It has been characterized by resilience, which stood, which withstood an unprecedented test of administering an examination of the largest number of candidates faced by the worst pandemic in human history. So for that, teacher, we are very grateful to your team and, and our officials. In celebrating the great achievements of the class of 2020, we also want to thank our principals in schools. We're always there in the evening, the morning, Saturdays. We really want to thank our school principals. We want to thank our teachers whose results are the ones that we're announcing today. Our support staff that supported schools, our parents who always stood behind us, even in the difficulties of whether we're closed or not closing, we're abandoning the year or not. Parents stood with us and supported us throughout. Schools that are the cold face of our system, we also want to thank them. And because the future of our learners and the prosperity of our nation is in the hands of our teachers and schools, and want to applaud them for the great work that they continue to do on a daily basis. But I also have to thank the portfolio and the select committees in Parliament for the support, the monitoring that they were giving us during this period. But I also want to thank my colleague, Dr. Regina Mhaule, all the MECs we met much more frequently. Sometimes we, we used to meet three times a week. We'll meet on Monday and then agree to meet on Thursday and then Sunday evening. Because it was not easy to really find our way through the difficulties. So I really want to thank all the MECs for the support, the guidance, and the, uh, 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 and, uh, 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 and the resilience that they also, and the leadership that they really displayed during this period. But DG and the Demsu and your colleagues in the provinces, we really want to thank you for the leadership, 
and your stewardship of making sure that the sector remains on track and all the officials in the sector. But more important and not least, I wish to thank our strategic partners, our teacher unions, our governing body associations, our business partners, Corporate South Africa really came to the party and supported us greatly during this period. So I want to also thank our business partners, Corporate South Africa, the NECT which helped us to organize the WOSA metric programs, I want to thank also our, our statutory bodies, Uma Lucy. As I said, when the exams leaked, I said, hey, maybe let's rewrite it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so we want to thank them. And our SAIS, we want to thank SAIS. And all our statutory bodies, our researchers who kept on giving us quality information about what to do, what not to do, what to fear, so that even when we're debating about opening and closing of schools, we were armed by information, not only from our department, but from different researchers in our country. Your, your pediatricians used to give us information. We were warned before to say, these ones will cough COVID <laughs> quicker, so don't keep them away from school. So by the time, Health and everybody said, ah, these ones uh, will survive. The researchers in the country always want us to say, these small ones will cough this thing off. Uh, don't keep them away from homes. For that, we are very grateful for, for, from, for them to really arm us with all the necessary information. But I really want to also thank our sister department. I want to thank South Africans in general. I also want to thank cabinet, because there were times when it was really tough to make decisions between whether we open or we close. And cabinet stood by us, they guarded us. If they felt we were too enthusiastic, they were able to say, pull back. South Africans are rightfully concerned because no one knows what this thing. So stay, slow down, then you can move. So they really supported us greatly with the Minister of Health. For that, we are really. And as I say, I also want to thank the government party. I'm not saying that they helped. They had to help us in communities, mobilize people. When schools were vandalized, I used to run home and say, our schools are being finished. Please go and organize your structures to protect our schools. And they did come to the party. And I think it's fair. I give a request, but it's fair to thank them. I really want to thank them and the community structures, your policing forums, which helped us. So program direct. Thank you very much. And also on behalf just to these learners on behalf of the government and everybody. We want to thank you for persevering and really making us proud this year. Otherwise, I don't know if we didn't write exam. I'm not sure what we'll be doing uh, last year, but thank you very much for really helping us to have an orderly transition into 2020. Otherwise, we'll be not knowing whether we're coming or going. And thank you very much for your resilience and your support. Thank you very much, Minister Mutsaka. That was the basic education minister, Minister Enji Mutsaka, who was announcing the 2020 results for the National Senior Certificate. Please, once again, let's give our learners a round of applause. And for now, before we even go further, we're going to be going to, into, into our awards ceremony. But before that, we've got a short video to show to you. I'm to write a nice message to our kids to say, come to school every day. So do something by the kids for the kids. So if you can get a nice voice by a child, someone beautiful, someone with lots of energy.
Well, 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 what did you think about that? Did you hear that the video actually features the voice of the Director General Ntate, Ntate Mueli? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the song really was inspired by him and everywhere he went last year, particularly with regards to the different campsites where the learners had to go for the last, you know, lap of preparing for the NSC examinations, he told the kids to come to school every single day, even on days that they were actually not writing. So I'm actually very, very happy. The song will be available um, all of this week on all platforms to, you, you know, to, to download, and the proceeds of that will go to various learner support programs, and I'm very, very happy about that. That was not my idea. It was the idea of Mr. Elijah, um, Mr. Elijah Mflanga together with his friend, Joe Nina, and they decided to make this contribution on their own. Okay, so share the song, play it every day for every single person to hear the message. I think it's quite a hopeful video. Don't you agree, um, Minister, Minister Mutsekha? Thank you very much. Now, I think we're about to get into the moment for which we all have been waiting. As I stated earlier on, the various candidates that did well in 2020 are in their various provinces. So we will try to, um, you know, try to connect via, via live stream. And I did say earlier on when I started the program that this is but a technical year. So I think be patient with us, particularly with trying as much as possible to, to connect. Uh, are we ready? Yes, are we all ready? Great. We will start with the minister's favorite subject that she actually mentioned today, mathematics. <laughs> um, no, minister, I think it's, it's, it's fine because we're trying to um, let the learners, um, you know, try to be socially distant. I think what I would like to inform all of the learners, especially also the learners that are featured across the entire country, uh, I will announce in third place, I will announce the person in second place, and I think the third and second positions, if you could please just stand up, wherever you are in the country, do stand up please, wherever you are in the country, doesn't really matter, because the cameras will go straight to you, and, the, and then if you are the winner or the first prize recipient of that particular subject, then you will take a, a picture with your, um, with your MEC in that particular province. Okay, so let's go. In um, position three, for mathematics, from the Eastern Cape, we've got Reynard Base. In second place, we have from the Western Cape, Veren Naidu. There they are. And in first place for mathematics, also from the Western Cape, Daniel Alvain Chos. Give them once again a wonderful round of applause. Those were the top learners for mathematics. And then physical sciences. In position three, we have from Gauteng Takuzwa Chikonye. Congratulations, Takuzo. I must say, um, Silly Sufi, that Takuzo is actually a learner of one of my friends and colleagues, so I'm actually quite proud of him. Well done. And in second place, we have Stefanus Johannes Krier from the KwaZulu Natal province. Well done, Stefanus. And the top learner for physical science from the Gauteng province, Karla Reineke. That will be if we can. Dr. Lucifer, if you could please just come and take a picture with the top physical science learner. Thank you so much, Minister. Well done, well done. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, MEC Lucifer. For technical mathematics, in third place for te technical mathematics, we've got Lungisani Duba. In second place for technical mathematics, from Mpumalanga province, we have got Ntobisi Brian Tlachwayo.
Well done, there they are. And the top performing learner for technical mathematics, also from Mpumalanga, we've got Peace Sipiwe Mapangisa. Peace Sipiwe Pangisa. Well done to those learners. And in technical science, technical sciences, we have in third position from Mpumalanga, Eric Mlondi Mavimbela. In second place, from the KwaZulu Natal province, we've got Ntebo Lindogutlem Tetwa. There they are, well done. And in first place, for technical, for technical sciences, also from the KwaZulu Natal province, we have Pumlani Kwanele Zuma. There is well done, well done, well done, Pumlani, well done, well done. It's amazing what technology can do, hey? Yes. And now the various quintiles. As, as, you, as most of you would note, South Africa has got five quintiles and we divide our schools into um, the various quintiles. We will begin with quintile one. Um, so the third place learner from a quintile one school, all the way from Limpopo, we have Pearl Koza in third position. And in second position, from Mpumalanga, we've got Dester Velta Gabriel de Selain. And the top performing Quintal One learner, we have from Gauteng, Blessing Mlambo. Thank you very much. Quintal Two. In the Quintal 2 stream, in third position, from the Eastern Cape, we've got Simamkele Bongo. And in second position, we have from KwaZulu Natal, Tembelile Innocentia Apilile Tsengan. And in first position for the Quintal 2 stream, all the way from the Northwest, we have Tapiwa God Knows Mauvera. Well done, well done to those learners. And in Quintal 3, Quintal 3, in third position from KwaZulu Natal, we have Luyanda Kuzwayo. Well done, Luyanda. In second position, we have from the Western Cape, Ayabukwa Nombela. And scooping the first prize for Quintal 3, all the way from the Northwest, Legato Babalo Tuba. Well done, well done, well done. And for the quintile four, quintile four, in position three, from the northwest, we have Yana Geyser. In second position, all the way from Mpumalanga, we've got Willem Lodeveik Kaprasuk. Well done, well done, well done. And the top Quintal 4 learner, all the way from the KwaZulu Natal province, we have Dipika Sumeru. Well done. Right, and then 
in the Quintel Five Awards. In third place for the Quintel Five stream, we have Sonika Ru. She is from the Western Cape. Sonika Ru, all the way from the Western Cape. And in second position, all the way from KwaZulu Natal, we have Colombe Cynthia Obono Eyono. All the way from KwaZulu Natal. Well done. And in first place in the Quintal Five stream, all the way from the Eastern Cape, congratulations, Reynard Bass. Now we have two um, special ministerial awards. The first goes to one of our Gauteng learners. Her name is Della Rose Cooper. Congratulations, Della Rose. If Minister Lissu, if, if MC Lissu, if you could please. Ah. Congratulations, congratulations, Della Rose Cooper. <laughs> Against all odds, hey. And the next special award goes to all the way from the Western Cape, Sonia Jemima Yonkers. All the way from the Western Cape. Congratulations, Sonia, congratulations. And then I think we've got the last um, category, which is the South African Sign Language category. In, in third position, all the way from KwaZulu-Natal, we have Khadija Hansrod, all the way from KwaZulu-Natal. And in second place, all the way from KwaZulu-Natal, we have Sinoyolo Siseke Longubani. And the top, the top South African Sign Language candidate for the year 2020, and I'm very, very proud that, um, Minister, that this is actually truly happening in your time. The top learner for South African Sign Language is Daniel Johannes Eminus. All the way from the Gauteng province. Congratulations to all of our candidates. Congratulations to everybody that received um, either a commendation or an award or both. Datemul, where were you when, when I told people that you were featured in, a, in, 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 in one of the videos? And, if, and, and the house went quite joyful. I'd like to call you up to come and give the vote of thanks, please. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ngobeni. Uh, uh, it will be mentioned, Minister. Mm. Thank you, Mr. Ngobeni. I will recommend you for a performance bonus. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> provided that it's approved by uh, Deputy Minister and the Minister. Um, Program Director, thank you very much. Let me start by thanking you for navigating this afternoon uh, for us. You did an, an excellent job. Can you please put your hands together for the Program Director? Thank you. I, I also want to convey our greatest word of appreciation and thanks to the class of 2020. You are our superstars. You are the best ever. You, you have proven that performance cannot be based on overall pass rate only. There are many dimensions to performance, and you have demonstrated that, uh, and we are eternally grateful. We are very proud of you, as the minister said. Uh, the minister likes saying, the world is your oyster. We have prepared you uh, for 12 years, and we are proud to release you to the world. Let's put our hands together for the class of 22. And in the same vein, as the minister has conveyed already, our unsung heroes and heroines are our teachers. Men and women who had to face the challenge of stabilizing the school environment, the classroom, working extremely hard under difficult conditions. We are eternally grateful to each one of them Let's put our hands together for our teachers, please. Thank you very much. I also want to thank my colleagues, officials at all levels of the system, DM. We've got a special team in basic education. Um, so we want to thank them as well. But let me focus on uh, uh, thanking our sponsors, MTN, uh, your first uh, um, event uh, to host uh, particularly uh, an activity of this nature. I heard people saying Kikabu Yellow. Uh, so uh, I don't uh, always go for Kabu Yellow in football, but when it comes to MTN, I'm sold out to Kabu Yellow. Thank you very much, MTN. And I also thank, uh, I would like to thank uh, AFBOB. You've been with us all the way. Uh, I, I said in the past, with basic education, you don't only see human beings when they leave this earth. You see them when they begin to live on this earth. It's a very good investment. Give uh, AFBOB a big hand of applause. Thank you, AFBOB. Ntsika, you've been a wonderful partner. You've walked the path with us. We are very proud of you. And thank you for your investment in education. Um, you invest in the future of our country. Let's give Ntsika a big hand of applause. And Fundi, I also want to convey our greatest appreciation and thanks for your support and your investment, and in the same vein, Vodacom, uh, you've always worked alongside with us, as well as Cajiso Trust. These are our excellent uh, sponsors and partners who continue to invest in the basic education sector. Let's give them a big hand of applause. I also want to take this opportunity to convey our greatest appreciation and thanks to the minister. Uh, minister, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you for being calm. Uh, especially, <laughs> I, I always maintain uh, that we've got an excellent minister and deputy minister. When things are tough and you look up to them, uh, they will never fail you. Put your hands together, please, to thank the minister. 
And in the same vein, to thank our MECs, we've got excellent leadership in this sector, as well as my colleagues uh, uh, who are working extremely hard, as the minister said uh, earlier on. Remusue, uh, thank you very much for the wonderful work that you are doing. All the officials, uh, including Makikan, Otsamakas Kelemar Makikan, Uberkaya. I've never seen something like this, Minister. She retires as a champion. And you do it with dignity and style. And, and lastly, I would have failed uh, in carrying out this task for not thanking our President Minister. I remember that day when we went to present to the National Coronavirus Command Council and subsequent to that, we went to cabinet. Uh, when the whole nation was divided over the reopening of schools, cabinet and the president stood together and gave us very clear instructions that you are going to reopen schools provided that you save lives and you save the academic year. We are eternally grateful to the leadership of our president and our cabinet we are led exceptionally well in our country. Let's put our heads together for the president. And lastly, Minister, I want to thank all the officials, especially the senior managers also from the department, the media, the organizing team, Mr. Mshanga, you're doing very well, but you bring some of the songs too early, man. Uh, they were supposed to have been processed through a submission. Uh, you missed, uh, you know, processing these things through the submission and then before presenting them to the public. Otherwise, thank you very much. I want to thank our parents. Thank you for displaying your confidence in us. And uh, again, thank our teachers for a wonderful job. Thank you very much and thank you one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director General. Now, before we end up our program, we will announce the top performing learner in the entire country. South Africa's top performing learner. The top performing learner in the Republic of South Africa. Africa Borwa, the whole of South Africa all the way from the Eastern Cape. Congratulations, Reynard Bass. If you could please all virtually give him a standing ovation. Congratulations. Thank you very much. If you could please all be, be seated. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our program. But before we close off, I'd like to state something to all of the matrix. The first is that congratulations for making it this far. Congratulations for even attempting to go sit on those desks and write what a technical year it was, and I think, um, Minister, I cannot emphasize it more than enough. A very technical year, and I think it kind of doubled, and in some other instances, trebled the work for some you know, educators and some of the kids. But most importantly, you leave today as, as matriculants who come from a greater village and a greater body. And that village comes in the form of that grade one teacher that taught you to write your name, that maths teacher that took out all of his Saturdays and sacrificed so that you could get all those distinctions. That village is also a village of that grandmother who took out a last hand rand to ensure that you go and get on a taxi. So congratulations, congratulations to every single one 
who wrote those exams. And if you did not make it, remember, like the minister always says, there are second chance programs. Do not falter. Do not lose hope. I'm signing out. I'm Itumele Mohanua Puting. And it's been, it's been quite a great pleasure to be with you today. Goodbye.